My in-ground pool had uh, developed these osmotic blisters on the pool steps. Uh, this uh, is a process where some water gets behind the polyester and delaminates it. Uh, if you cut them open, you'll find there's a little bit of moisture inside them and the polyester is delaminated from the fiberglass. So these are these uh, glass reinforced polyester steps. Um, this is a Fort Wayne brand, uh, which is a very common one. Uh, these pool steps are were made back in the uh, late 80s. And so about uh, 20 some odd years later they started uh, delaminating. I originally read you take this uh, grinder tool to use uh, and remove the, the material but, uh, and then come back with a sander and finish it up, smooth it with the sander. I use the uh, air grinder here obviously because it's a lot safer around the pool and this was an opportunity I had when we were replacing the pool liner to uh, do this work with the water level down. Uh, what I did discover after doing this for a while was the grinder was really a lot of extra work. Uh, I could do the same thing with the sander and just use uh, 80 grit to start with and then switch it out and use uh, 120 grit to, to polish it up. What's really important is to uh, grind this right down and get rid of all the delaminated material. Uh, as you grind it down you'll see uh, in the bottom of the hole uh, where the polyester is bonded to that uh, fiberglass and you can see where it's not so there's a spot right there that needs to be ground down a little further until I get good contact between the two surfaces. So what I found worked out better later was to just use the, uh, the sander not the grinder. I'd use a 80 grit to start with put 120 in uh, to finish things up and smooth it out. Obviously I'm standing in water so I'm going to be using air tools most I can and this material is uh, got some fiberglass in it so I'm wearing protective equipment mask and, and glasses. You're going to want to buy a lot of these uh, sanding discs and I found uh, they gum up pretty quickly uh, the polyester sticks to them when it gets hot and uh, I was replacing them pretty frequently even though they weren't quite worn out yet. After I got all the holes uh, sanded down I prepped them by just brushing them off and then hit them with a heat gun to make sure they're all well and truly dry. Uh, part of the problem with this process is you're going to be doing it uh, probably do when you replace the pool liner which is probably in the spring so the air temperatures won't be as warm as you'd like uh, to bake this stuff. Uh, but uh, and you've got to do it pretty quick during the process of replacing this pool liner. So you don't have a lot of choices uh, except maybe use a little extra heat. I will show you to be careful with this because you can melt these uh, steps with this type dryer if you use them a little too long. After some research I managed to find this material made by Multitech products. They call it poly paste and it comes in a Fort Wayne white uh, so it's a perfect match. Uh, I bought a quart of it. I probably could have got by with a pint even though I had a what I thought was a pretty big job. It's not very expensive. Uh, there are other products that do it. I'm not saying this is the best. This is just the one I found and I liked it. Um, the only trouble I had with it was uh, they said you have to mix this with uh, about six or eight drops of this MEKP hardener um, per ounce. And I found one ounce batches was about as much as I wanted to work with at a time, by the way. And I, uh, But I also found that Maybe it was the temperatures, maybe it was this batch of poly paste, but I had to put a lot more MEKP in it to get to harden in a four or five minute period. Uh, originally, the six to eight drops was taking way too much time to harden, uh, and the material was just drying out and cracking. Uh, so this stuff is sticky as heck. Um, highly recommend gloves and whatever tools you're going to use, be prepared to just throw them away at the end of the job this stuff hardens and uh, it is hard to get off the tools. On the flat spots I found it was pretty easy just to use a putty knife and uh, smooth it on like any kind of uh, spackling. I got a little more creative in these curved surfaces. I found this wooden popsicle stick uh, was quite the tool for filling in some of these unusual curves and whatnot. Finish it up by just uh, 120 grit sand down. 
If anything, I should have uh, got a little deeper on some of my step uh, holes. I was trying not to tear up the step pattern too much, but I should have not done that. Should have uh, gone ground it down as deep as I, I needed to. Anyway, here we are uh, five years later, and if you look at this surface, it looks pretty good. I mean, this has got a few spots coming up. I've got one or two new uh, blisters that have come up. For the most part, though, the, it's pretty much under control, and I was pretty happy with that result. So there's a couple of those step pieces that I didn't uh, grind down as deep as I should have. So that, that's on me. I think the product did well. Uh, my technique could have improved a little bit, but... So anyway, good luck with your project. Hope this helps. Um, thanks for watching.